hey, is life going pretty good for you and you don't want to lose ground at all? Well, listen today because I'm going to teach you how to sustain all the good things for years and years in your life. You were made for more than the status quo. I'm Pastor Steve Gray, and this is the More Faith, More Life podcast. This podcast is for Christians with an ambitious heart who want to be more for their family, do more with their career, and see more of God's promises in their life. I've spent many years as a worship artist, minister, nonprofit leader, bold truth speaker, and most importantly, father and spouse. When I was in my early 40s, I was craving more, more from God and more from life. I'd done everything I was supposed to do. My life was good, but it wasn't good enough. So I spent the following years diving into the Word of God and searching for the biblical principles that would bring me closer to God and help my purpose and life flourish. That's what I want to share with you. In every episode, you'll get practical tools based on real life experiences that you can put into action to redefine your faith and ultimately your life. So. If you're ready to do more, subscribe to More Faith, More Life, and hear an unfiltered biblical truth every week. It's time to be and experience more. Hello, everybody. Welcome again to More Faith, More Life, and this is the podcast that's going to help you become the person you want to be. You can really change. You follow, listen. You got to listen more than one. You need to subscribe. You need to listen. You need to watch, listen to all of them, watch all of them. Uh, all these podcasts, and your li- you do these, your life will change. It's, it's proven. I've done it, uh, and I've done it myself, done it for thousands around the world. It'll change, and they're not hard things to do. They're just wise things to do. It's not strange, different, or spooky, or anything like that. It's just wisdom, wisdom, wisdom of things you can do to help change the direction your life is going, to start thinking in success, to start thinking in right. Right thinking produces right actions and right things. And so I want to help you, but I also want to mention that sometimes uh, I get off into the more life, 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 think like this, do like, and I don't talk enough about more faith because uh, I, I have a great faith, I guess. I never thought of myself as that, but now I've been doing this so long, I've watched people say, wow, you, you have a lot of faith. You sure walked by faith. And I guess I did. I didn't think about it at the time. But when I became a Christian, 23 years old, uh, I meant it. And something powerful happened to me. But even something beyond the experience of born again, you know those words, born again, coming into the kingdom, child of God, I mean, and really being serious about it, right? Uh, I, I didn't immediately go in the ministry, although I wanted to, but I, I was a high school teacher. And I went back and taught high school. But oh, was I changed. But one of the gifts that I got somehow was the thought, okay, because we're going to talk about our thinking a little bit, was the thought that God is always going to do good for me. God's going to do me good. God's going to do good for me, with me, for me. Now, most people don't have that. Most people are double-minded. You know, double-minded, the Bible talks about if you've got two minds going at the same time, you know what I'm talking about. You'll be unstable. You don't know which mind you're going to be in. One day you're here. Oh, I, I love you. I'm happy. Every, oh, man, I don't know what's gone wrong in my life. Well, they do the same thing with God. God's a good God. Oh, but God might take some stuff away from me. Oh, God's going to treat me right, but God, he might be mad at me. He might um, bless me today. But I don't know. He might let his bad dogs out tomorrow to chase me, you know, and bite me. He might bite me tomorrow. So that's two minds. And I was blessed, don't know how, with the idea, God's always going to do good for me and be good to me. Uh, that doesn't mean that I didn't have some hard lessons. Sometimes like a father, you know, he would, um, you know, he, as a father, he would train you and discipline you and correct you or me. And, uh, but it was all good for me. Everything he was doing was good for me. And so I began to have my faith in that. I have my faith in my Heavenly Father. I have faith in the Savior Jesus. I have faith, but listen to this. I have faith in the system. God has a system. The kingdom of God is a whole other way of thinking. Uh, It has a new king. The king is Jesus. 
You treat him like a king. You think like a king. You think in kingdom terms. Kingdom living is a whole nother way of living. It's a whole nother way of thinking. And it produces a whole nother kind of life, a really good life. And so I want to help you with kingdom thinking. And one of the kingdom thoughts that we must have if we're going to sustain the good that God wants to do, because God can do good things and then we mess it up. We don't know how to sustain it. We don't know how to keep it going. Uh, one of the things, I'm getting off the subject here, but one of the things that people don't understand is most people know the Ten Commandments. They can cite a couple of them, but they know they're there. And I've heard people say, just live by the Ten Commandments and that'll be good enough. Well, it's not because the Ten Commandments were never meant to be enough. But nevertheless, when God gave the Ten Commandments to the Israelites through Moses, the children, the Hebrews, through Moses, <clears throat> he wasn't giving it as to obey rules. It was given to maintain the blessings of God that God was doing and wanted to continue to do. If you continue, if you do these things, here's 10, 10 things. If you'll do these things, then you will be able to maintain the blessing of God. If you don't, then you're going to pull in bad things. So start thinking of the Bible that way. It's, it's a maintenance book. It maintains. It's not rules, regulations. It's not out to get you. It's not out to ruin your life and take your fun away. It's going to teach you how to maintain, how to think and maintain. It's an excellent thinking book and how to maintain the good that God has done or wants to do. So a lot of people you get God did something, helped you, helped you in some way, but you didn't know what to do after that. How do you keep, keep getting that help, all right? So one of the things that uh, we get in, in the Bible, it's only one, is how to think after God has done something good or after your life is going pretty good, okay? It's something good has happened or it's better. And that means you want to maintain that. So you're going to have to learn something, and that's called perseverance, that keep going perseverance. And the, the Bible teaches us perseverance, right? Perseverance will produce for you. It produces good things. You'll get there. Um, you may not know this. A lot of people, they only know a couple of scriptures, you know. Uh, but you may not know that this is in the Bible, that God has scriptures in there that says he wants to provide for you all that you need at all times, so you can be generous at all times and participate in the kingdom of God, with God. A lot of people don't even know that's in there. So you learn that to persevere, keep going, and how to, how to create more good things because that's what God wants. All, he wants you to have all that you need, all the time. Did you know that? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But that's where I want to put your faith. I want you to have more faith in the process that God has given called the kingdom of God. It's another way of thinking. It's another way of living. And one of the things that he teaches is perseverance. Whatever you see, you don't live by circumstances. You live by faith that God is going to pull good out of whatever you see. So I don't make, don't make decisions out of fear. Don't make decisions uh, out of poverty. Don't make a decision, you know, maybe finances aren't what they're supposed to be. So you make a dumb decision and go out and rent furniture, <laughs> you know, rent to own or whatever. And now you can't pay or go get a loan that's got terrible uh, finances. You go buy a car that's uh, uh, got 150, 200,000 miles on it and you pay too much money. Well, you know, it's not going to make it. Something's going to break and now you're going to have to refinance. It's just a mess. So I want to teach you how to think, and that is persevere with what you have and don't panic and don't make poor decisions, especially financial and relationship, all right? Persevere. So uh, Kathy and I, my wife, we've been married 48 years. Now to get there, you're going to have to learn perseverance. There's so many things that come along that make you want to give up or make you want to quit or get your eyes going another way and say, you know, maybe I just had that partner or that partner. It would have been a lot better. It doesn't because the problems we have, we're creating ourselves. And no matter, you get a divorce and you get remarried, you're going to take you with you <laughs> and all that you are. Even if the other person is perfect, you're going to still find something wrong if you're a person that finds something wrong. If you're a complainer, 
you're going to complain no matter who you're with. You see, there can be a person try to be perfect for you and it will never be enough until you change the way you think and think of, I need to persevere, keep going with what I have. I have enough. I have enough. When I was first starting out in pastoring, you know, church pastors and leaders, they always ask you how many people you have in your church, you know, because that's how they judge you. Like, how big's your church, you know? And I was just starting out as a country preacher. I told you, thank the Lord. He, you know, propelled me into a big ministry, but around the world. But I was just a country preacher and uh, started out in a little town and in an old dilapidated church. The pews were those old curved kinds, and they were so old that if you wore a light colored shirt or a white shirt and you leaned back too long during the sermon, when you got up, they had the stain would come onto your clothes. That's how old they were. Ancient, the pews, everything, the pads, everything was ancient. And they always say, well, how many you got? How many people you got in your church? And it was small anyway. How many people you got? And so I began to figure out, what, how do you answer that? Because I know what they're looking for. You know, they want to know numbers to compare you to their church or somebody else's church or your success by numbers. So they'd say, well, how many you got in your church? And I'd say, enough. I have enough. Huh? I have enough to do what God wants me to do and what I want to do and what they want me to do. Whatever it is, I've got enough. Right now you persevere because you have enough. You say, I've got enough. I have enough in me to keep going that I don't have to give up. I don't have to despair. Depression, what's that? I'm not going to get depressed. I'm not going to get discouraged. I'm not going to change course easy. Now, here's one of the things you should do and that is seek good advice before you do anything. But most people don't. They do things and then they seek advice later. And it may be good. It might not be good. Because most people, if they see it's not going well after you went a certain direction, are going to tell you to give up. Give up, change course, walk away, whether it be relationships, you know, a ministry, a church, a business finances, whatever it is, walk away, start over, go to another church, quit your job, find another job, go to a career, go to school. Maybe so, but rare is the person that says, nope, keep going. Now, if you seek good advice in the first place, you'll get enough advisors to tell you, I agree, this is what you should do. And when you do that, you're going to find obstacles. You're going to find obstacles. And that's when you rely on your faith. You see, faith helps us to see what others don't see. Faith people, when you have more faith than the other guy, you know, you only have more faith. More faith helps you to see what others don't see. More faith helps you to know what others don't know. And so when you have that more faith and you respond by faith to life, to God, to the Holy Spirit, you start thinking in terms of faith, then you start thinking in terms of perseverance. And faith tells you, don't give up. Don't look at your circumstances. If you need help, pray, ask God for help. If you need wisdom, the Bible says, if you need wisdom, ask for it. And then after you get it, he's gonna send it. Don't waver, don't waver. Don't be like somebody tossed by the sea. Well, I think I should, I don't know. I'm away, I'm, uh, I'm worried, I'm afraid it won't work, okay? So seek good advice before you do anything. But if you seek advice while you're in the midst of a storm, a lot of people are going to make you go under. And maybe, maybe you should. Maybe you should change course. Maybe. But maybe you just need to keep going. And you know, when you've been married 48 years, I tell people, look, when we were, when we were married just for 10 years, 10 years, everything went pretty good, but at 10 years, eh, starting to wear, starting to change, starting to feel, well, oh, I don't know. It's just something that just was more difficult. You know, we, we, both of us, we, I don't know. And uh, those are the times when you start thinking, well, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe it's not right. Maybe I should do something else. But you know what? When you get in those things, I, I'm telling you, if you're married, you're going to go through certain things, but persevere. Don't give yourself the option of divorce or separation. Persevere. Work it out. Start speaking faith. Start speaking love. As I said before, have I said before, sow love, 
so positive things, start talking, what can we do? What can I do to make this better? One of the things I tell people, when you, if you're going to persevere and keep producing and keep going, you're going to have to take uh, three words. I had to count them. Three words out of your vocabulary. And the three words you need to get rid of is, I don't know. I don't know. You know why you can't say, I don't know? Because you do know. I um, counseled marriages for years. Don't do it now. Others do it for me. But thank you. Thank you, Lord. But uh, I guess that's not an easy job. But uh, I would get in and uh, somebody come and say, okay, tell me, tell me what's wrong. What? How did you get in this position? I don't know. It's bad. We argue. We bicker. He's selfish. I don't know. He or she or that. Well, what could you do to make this better? I don't know. Well, what did you do to get there? I don't know. Take that out. You do know. I know. You know exactly what to do. If you're struggling in your marriage right now or in a relationship, even if the other person doesn't get it, you know what to do. You know what's right. You're a wise person. You've probably been around enough to, at least you believe in God. If you push your faith, you could even get more wisdom. You could get more seeing what you can have, seeing what others don't see, feeling what others don't feel, walking by faith, not by sight. Everybody can look by sight and say, oh, this looks bad. Look, that's bad. No. Walk by faith, not by sight. Faith will let you see what others don't see, right? And then you do know what to do. I've had people say, I don't know what to do with my kids. My kids are running wild and they don't obey and they're doing bad in school and I just don't know what to do. Are you kidding me? You do too know what to do. You know exactly what to do. You know what they need. And if you don't really don't think you know, pray and ask God for wisdom. Pray and ask God for wisdom. Put your faith in God. Open that, crack that Bible open. Read about children. Read about marriage. Read about how leaders work. Because in there, there's some great scriptures on. You can look up on your phone. You know, what does the Bible say about leadership? What's a good leader? How do you work in the home? And uh, how do you get respect in the home? And all kinds of things. Okay, read the Bible. Get some advice from God. Pray about it. But anyway, uh, you know what to do. Set boundaries. Yes means yes. No means no, right? Set boundaries. If you say you're going to do it, be a person of integrity. You know why kids don't respect their parents? And then they rebel, not because they were taken such good care of. They rebel because they were neglected by parents that were too tuned in to themselves. And so they rebel. Especially, why did they rebel about 15, 16, 17 years old? Well, because they're getting into things that are dangerous, drugs or sex, drugs, driving, you know, alcohol, all that kind of stuff. And now the parents say, oh, I got to put a, I got to put some clamps on this. I got to set some boundaries. And the kid rebels. You know why? Because he's thinking like, where were you when I was in fifth grade? Where were you when you, I just sat there alone and you never cared what I did? You didn't help me with homework. You didn't even know what was going on in my life. Oh, and now you want to jump in. Now you want to jump in and tell me how to live and what, sorry, not going to do it. And they rebel and they lie and they go behind your back. So learn to be a good leader. You know what to do. You got younger children, even older ones have integrity. You know what integrity is? Integrity is keeping your word. Now, I don't know if everybody's ever been 100% keeping their word, but God and Jesus, right? 100%. But you can shoot for 100%. I always, at best I can, even when it hurts, keep, what, keep your word, your word. And say, this is what I said I would do, and I'm going to do it. But my word is also, you ever been in the store, you know, and <laughs> the mom says, if you don't quit crying, if you don't quit grabbing stuff off the shelf, I'm going to take you over here and spank you. Or I'm going to take that away from you. And then they keep going down the aisle and kids screaming, grabbing, and nothing happens. Wouldn't you like to just say, hey, do what you said you're going to do, right? And I'll watch. I'll just see it, you know. <laughs> keep your word, right? Persevere. Plan on keeping going. Make the plan. I plan on keeping going. Unless it just gets so obvious that it's the wrong direction. Okay. But I made a good decision. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going in my marriage. You know why? Because 
you can you can get divorced and go to something like so you're just going to take it with you and then you got the same problems again it's better off it's so much easier is to stay married to the same person you used to say you loved them you said you loved them you looked happy walking down the aisle and you you know all the rice thrown in your face you looked happy and drove away uh there must have been something there you're not a fool so there was something there that grabbed you now you just need to get it back and let it grab you again yeah it's old and worn out marriage yeah you can get an old worn out marriage but persevere persevere you'll be glad you did because good things come at different times in our life 10 years is rough maybe maybe some years then persevere get to 20 years 25 years you go eh, i am so glad i stayed where i was because it would have been so messy so difficult and what would i have gained so persevere in most jobs you should persevere work your way up now if it's a going nowhere job okay do it well keep your word be the best worker you can be no complaining right you don't complain you don't whine you're the best worker there right because you want to know how to maintain a good life you want to know how to persevere how do i keep going stop complaining be the best worker they have you may not plan on working there at that fast food restaurant or this other restaurant you may not plan on waiting tables on tables the rest of your life but learn to persevere waiting on tables learn to keep going flipping hamburgers keep going whatever job you have be the best worker keep going with integrity because what happens is number one you're gonna you're gonna progress and get better at it but you're gonna take integrity and perseverance wherever you go wherever you go you will succeed and you'll get greater success and you do greater things because you kept going and so you got to get rid of giving up whining and expecting somebody to help you and bail you out nope nope i am going to persevere i do not say i don't know i do know i need to persevere i need to set boundaries for myself i need to set boundaries for my home there's some things we never do right do that to yourself there's some things i never do i'll never do there's some things in my family we will never do right there's some things we're always going to do now this is my family build your faith a little here my family we always go to church we've always gone to church since <laughs> since i became a christian and started a family yeah but my kids my grandkids we we never discuss should we go to church they never say i don't want to go i've never heard my kids say i don't want to go to church ever uh, it's who we are, what we do. We love it. We have friends there. We have community there. We have uh, family there. And we have music. We Everything's there. Inspiration and wisdom and knowledge. It's all there. So we always do that. Uh, my family, we always tithe. Tithe is 10% of your income. We do more than that. But we all, Kathy and I have always, ever since becoming believers, We've always been tithers. We give 10% of our income to God. We always do it. We don't look and say, well, how much money do I have? Oh, God, I can't afford it. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know what I have to do. I should give to God first and God's going to help me. He's going to stretch what I have. I give him 10%. He's going to stretch my 90%. See, get more faith, more faith. You get more faith, you'll get more life. Are you getting this? So you want to, you want to go, you, you're somewhere in life. Good. You got there. You're married. Stay fairly stable. Got a job fairly stable. You got kids. For, okay. Persevere. Don't let anything turn you to the left, to the left or to the right. Keep going. Keep going. Occasionally, is there a major change we've made? Yeah. But most of the time, perseverance will keep you stable and you'll keep graduating and graduating and graduating and to a higher level. And not only a higher level in job and finances, but just a higher level as a person. A person. Because you, pers you know perseverance. You're a rare person. You have integrity. You keep your word. You keep going. You keep your word. You don't let circumstances change your mind, right? You are solid. Perseverance needs to finish its work. And the Bible says when it finishes its work, you'll have all you need. You'll have everything you need. Perseverance is a power that should be part of your life. 
so that you can live that more faith and have more life. I've found it to be true with me. It'll be true with you. Till next time. Bye-bye.